So I have, I have obviously an extremely biased set of perspectives on this, so please forgive me because I'm going to say the thing that I believe, but it's also going to sound like, man, that guy's really talking his book. Um, I think pushing for more good instead of less bad is critical. I think a lot of human nature is to focus too much on less bad, the, the things that we can incrementally fix right away, rather than dream of the things that can catapult us to the next level of human progress and capability and whatever else you want to call it. Um, OpenAI took four and a half years before we launched our first product. And our first product, honestly, I don't know if any of you remember GPT-3. If you do, I'm sorry and I apologize. Um, it wasn't that good. Um, and then it took us longer to get out GPT-3.5 and then launch ChatGPT and then GPT-4. And, you know, oh, oh, one preview is still deeply flawed. Oh, one when it comes out, will feel really good to us at the time. But looking back in a couple of years, we'll feel... Um, still embarrassing. This stuff takes a long time. Um, doing hard startups takes a long time. Um, doing a nuclear energy startup takes a decade. But I think this is really important to have the conviction and the dedication to say, yes, it's going to be hard. Yes, it's going to take a long time. Um, it's going to be a little demotivating and a little distracting to see other people get more success sooner on you know, ideas that are maybe easier. But going after these really big unlocks that are high risk, high reward, and very time and sort of personal energy intensive, I think that's a critical part of how the world gets better. I think investing in deep technological progress, um, even though it's often not the quick the quick win um, is such an important part of the win. Now, other people have other ideas, other people do things other ways, and I think it's all great. Anything that increases human prosperity, I'm all for, but there's a special place in my heart for startups that are risky, that take a long time, and that really kind of add a new tool to the human tool chain if they work. And Thank you. <laughs> and by the way, um, this is a place where I think Europe can play a very strong role. Um, there are a lot of things, you know, there's an incredible amount of talent and history in different industries here. I've met a lot of people on this trip and others that are doing these hard things. I think the startup ecosystem needs some uh, additional resources, but the spirit is here. And, and I think this is very relatable to what we've been trying to do here in, in Turin and the initiative Vento, which is really trying to make sure that we can give the opportunity of great founders who are aspiring to do exactly what you were saying, Sam, but equally our venture building activity, who's actually physically done here at, at UGR, and, and the opportunity like the one we have today of exchanging. What I do think is, is though important, and that's probably my personal bias as, as I've really a continuation of what has been a family history of entrepreneurialism who traces over three centuries when in, in the city the, the car industry was starting and Fiat was founded in 1899. Uh, you, you end up going through different waves of renew and change and, and in some ways what I think is, is really important is to try and capture and particularly true for a country like Italy, which you love, you've been here I many do. times, is, is we're not only about our history, we're not only about our culture, we're not only about the incredible things that have happened in Venice that ChatGPT was telling you about. And in Have some ways, in your view, with your lenses, right, how can you make sure, and the audience here, that I instead of looking at it with pride, it is actually a way in which it feels that you're pushed forward and that you don't become lazy or insecure about all the things that already have happened. But just on the contrary, you take that in a way that, well, there's so much more to do. And, and you asked me, what do I think about AI last night? And I told you what I think about AI is the incredible things that I don't know 
that are going to come yet. So, first of all, I think this is a yeah. I, I appreciate you saying that. I, I think in any place with such a rich history, it's tempting to look back and be proud. And a thing I love about you and many other people here that I, I look around and see that I know uh, is just this relentless drive to look forward and say we're only as good as our next thing. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep pushing and driving progress. Um, I think this is a very special time to do that. I think technological revolutions like the one that we're lucky enough to be witnessing right now with AI don't come along very often. Maybe it's like an every couple of decades thing, and this is when the the most new creative energy is possible. This is when new industries, great new companies, get born.、Um, in a career, you may only get a couple of moments like these. And I think I love the startup energy always.、Uh, I I think that this is a time to really go for it. This is like, you know, this is a time when the earth is shaken in some sense. The normal rules of who can succeed at what are suspended, and startups have an incredible edge because they can move more quickly, they can iterate faster, and that's so rewarded. When there's this level of dynamism, I would love to see Europe and Italy, in particular, really embrace this. I think it's not easy. I think it requires economic change, maybe regulatory change, societal change. There's all these things about Silicon Valley that work really well. But assuming nothing of all of this change, you still see incredible capability of people of doing things despite of all of it. Do, do you believe that? Yeah, people will do. I mean, it's human nature. People are going to do incredible things no matter what. But the degree of success, I think, is a factor of the environment.、Um, but this is a great sign. Like this didn't happen a decade ago, and this is the kind of change that I think needs to happen to form a community. Like our, in my own thing, in my own life, one of the most important things that happened to me was the early Y Combinator startup schools and being in rooms like this. The speakers didn't matter, but just meeting the other people and those connections from almost 20 years ago now are still some of the people that I text regularly, am super close to, work with directly.、Um, forming community, I think you can do so much more than an individual startup could just go do off on their own. So I think things like this are super important. Because I think, Sam, that what's important is not to have any alibi. There's always reasons why it couldn't have been different, and in some ways, if we end up Trying to see what can change in terms of regulations, in terms of policies. Don't, you can't wait for、right? that. And I and I think the push we we ought to give ourselves and also who's in the audience is ultimately push where you can and the good outcomes A- abs- come、yeah. out of it. I think that's for sure. And again, I cannot overstate. I think the specialness of this moment. This is really a time to go for it. This is really a time to push where you can. Great companies are going to get started around the world in the next couple of years. I'd love to see many of them happen right here. I think this is. I think this is the beginning of like a genuine technological revolution, and I, I did my career in a sort of strange order.、Um, you know, normally you, at least in Silicon Valley, you run a company for a while. You do a startup, then you become an investor, and then you have like some sort of passion project as your retirement job.、Um, I did technically run a company first, but it didn't go very well, and I learned a bunch of painful lessons, and also didn't learn like I think you always can learn the wrong things from failure too.、Um, but then I became an investor, and I was pretty good at that, and I thought I was going to do that. And then I got, I did this passion project of running an AI research lab. And then I ended up having to run a big company, and I, I'm thrilled with how it's gone. I'm very grateful, but I do think sometimes, man, if I could be a tech investor right now, this would be the most fun time ever, because of the number of great things that are going to get created. And so, it's not just like do what you can. It's go shoot as ambitiously as you possibly can. Say this is a crazy and rare opportunity, and we're going to build the next giant tech company.